Dude, how is it that I've been playing Minecraft for so long and I just now figured out that if you hit one of the number buttons while hovering over an item, it switches it with that spot on the on the hotbar. How did I never know this before? <laughs> I've seen other Minecraft YouTubers do it and I've just never known how. I feel like I've opened up an entirely new section of this game. This is a monumental discovery. I have survived yet another 500 days in this Minecraft world. So to celebrate, I'm going to be compiling all of my adventures again within those 500 days into one long movie. I hope you enjoy this movie if you're using it to study or to fall asleep to, or if you just enjoy watching really long videos in general. Thank you so much for watching. Let's begin the movie. From the beginning of this series, I always planned on transforming this village into a massive city, and today is finally the day that we get started. In this episode, we tackle the main entrance gatehouse thing, which actually ended up being way larger than I was expecting. And we also build up the first couple of buildings within the city itself. I plan on making this city absolutely massive. Like I wanna have its own like shopping districts. I wanna have like housing districts, all that fun stuff. I want this to be a very, very large city. So if you wanna see how far I actually get into building this thing in hardcore Minecraft, definitely consider hitting that subscribe button down below if you're not already subscribed. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode. I really hope you enjoy. Now obviously, if I want to put a city here, um, I might have to get rid of the existing village. So I think that's going to be the first thing I do today. We're going to take down all of these buildings and the structures associated with the village. And then after that, I would like to terraform over here because this terrain is really awkward looking. I always feel kind of bad destroying villages, but uh, let's get started taking this one down. Now that the village has been reduced to these five shulker boxes, it's time to start working on the surrounding terrain because it looks really bad. I want to get rid of all of these pathways and I also just want to smooth out the terrain in general. I kind of just want to give myself a completely blank slate to begin this project. That way it'll be far easier for me to design, you know, where the pathways are going to go and where the buildings are going to go and all that fun stuff. Let me go grab a butt ton of dirt and grass and we can start shaping out this area. This took way longer than I was expecting, um, but we do have the terrain looking a little bit better now. This spot over here still looks kind of weird. I don't really know what I want to do with this section. It's kind of like a nice natural cliff right now, so I might kind of leave it this way and decorate it kind of like we did over here, like around the bridge area in Shrammy Land. I'll decide on that later though. Originally I was going to have the city start like right here but I think I'm gonna move it over this way more. So I'm just gonna have this path wind this way a little bit more, and then we will actually start the city probably like right here, about where I'm standing now. Just for the time being then, I'm gonna put a very tentative path block pathway over in this direction. There's one more thing though I would like to build kind of in this area before we start working on the gatehouse, and that is a stable. Because if you think about it, right, if you're just traveling through this area and you're visiting the city, you'd want to have a place to, you know, kind of park your horses. So I think having a stable right outside the gatehouse makes a ton of sense. It's not going to be a massive sized stable, but I do need to go gather some more spruce wood because I think I have like 12 in my storage room. I have just over four stacks of stripped spruce logs now, so this should be plenty. The rest of this stuff here I was able just to gather from my storage room. So we got some oak, we got some deep slate stuff, and some other random materials in this other shulker box. I'm gonna bring in some barrels here for the bottom of these pillars. And then we'll use some spruce and some oak and stuff to fill them out. I'm thinking this size is probably pretty good. So let me grab a little bit of stripped spruce and oak logs and let's finish off these pillars. Let's go up four more on all these sides and I'm also going to be connecting these across. Now let's go ahead and throw some stairs and trap doors over here. It's looking pretty standard, I guess I could say. <laughs> this is kind of what I do for a lot of my builds here, as you guys should probably all know by now. But let's move on to the roof. And have the same roof pattern that we have on the other houses here. So we're just going to slab up to the middle with these cobbled deep slate slabs. Then the inside of the roof here will be a nice mix of deep slate tiles and deep slate brick slabs. And where occasionally we're going to break in some tough, some moss, and some mossy cobblestone. I was messing around for a little while to try to find an interior that I liked, and I settled on this. Now it's not very decorated, 
we have to go add some you know finishing touches to this build but this is the layout we have three different sections where we can actually have some horses and we have an area in front of where the horses are going to be where we can throw some chests or some hay and just other decoration blocks next up then i would like to add some windows to this build and i'd also like to terraform the surrounding area just so this thing actually fits in and it doesn't look like it's just inside the ground over here so let me go put the final touches on this build and i'll be right back yo are you good my man is it like this bush that just doesn't make sense to you like i don't all right well i just finished putting the final details on the stables building and i also continued the path over in this direction and it now leads to this area which is where the city is going to begin but a quick look at the stables we have some greenery blocks got a bunch of leaves got a bunch of other plants and stuff and i really like this design let me actually move it though because it's not connected to the roof um, but i like this design if you just put a chain like that then you put a flower pot underneath it and then a spruce sapling in the flower pot it kind of looks like it's being held up and it's like a little hanging plant there is like a really small gap there that it isn't connected but it looks good enough at like a quick glance so i like it quite a bit i used it in this build a couple times anyway though let's now move over here where we will be building up the gatehouse my idea for this gatehouse is i would like two rather large towers on either side and then maybe like a roofed bridge kind of house thing connecting it in between i want to have a gradient from deep slate to stone in the walls of this build and i have a good amount of stone blocks as you can see in this chest but i do need a lot more deep slate i don't really have too much i have all this deep slate here that i accidentally silk touched but this is not the block I want. I want the cobbled deep slate. Let me hit the mines for a little bit and we can fill up an entire shulker box with deep slate stuff. After about like 20, 25 minutes or so, we got an entire shulker box of cobbled deep slate. Now I want to make one third of this box into deep slate bricks, another third into the tiles and then we're gonna leave the last third the way it is i would also like to use these blocks for the roof like the crimson stem the crimson planks and the purple terracotta uh, but the issue is i really don't have much crimson stem i want to see how far this gets me and if i have to travel to the nether to get some more i will do that this should be enough blocks though to at least get started so let's head over here let's throw down our little workstation and let's start placing some blocks actually there is one more material that i need to go gather i want some glow lichen i think the glow lichen will help transition from the deep slate to the cobblestone a little bit better that didn't take long at all we have about four stacks of glow lichen now so let's actually start building now this is going to go from deep slate to stone so let me grab a little bit of deep slate blocks and let's map out where this build is going to go. I'm not sure if this is going to be too big, but I think the towers for now are going to be seven by seven at the bottom. And now let's start building these up and let's add a little bit of texture. This is just the deep slate blocks, but it's looking pretty good. Started with the tiles, moved on to the bricks, ended up with the cobbled deep slate. Now comes the tricky part. Hopefully I can transition this into tough pretty well and then into the other stone blocks of course i definitely apologize somebody is cutting the grass outside so you can probably hear that in the background but i definitely like what i have so far the glow lichen is a nice touch from here though it should be pretty simple i just have to take this tough and transition it into stone which i have done plenty of times all over the place in this world of course it starts raining it just always does in this world i don't understand um but it's a little bit difficult for me right now to determine if this is a good height it just looks really weird right it's like super bare I feel like once I put more decoration around it, I'll know if this is a good height or not. So let me go ahead and start doing that. Let's throw in some spruce and some other accents. Let's see if that looks even kind of good. Oh, that actually looks really nice. Yeah, I'm very comfortable with this. We kind of just need some trap doors now, but I kind of just need spruce wood in general. So let me just go gather a whole bunch more because I definitely do not have enough to build the second tower as I have uh, none. I have zero. I gathered about two thirds of a shulker box of stripped spruce logs, so let's go put these to good use. The second tower has been constructed. So now all we have to do is add the part in the middle. For starters, let's see if we could just bring a spruce wood beam all the way over here. Actually, I should probably put some oak wood in here too. And let's do this on the other side as well. I think this could look kind of cool. So five blocks on either side. 
I'm gonna have a piece of wood jut out and then an upside down stair. And then one more of those in the middle too, why not? And then we're gonna build these up, maybe five blocks or so. Now let's do this on this side as well. Then let's definitely get this archway design back here again. I'm also gonna kick out this part of the building right here, just one block rather than two. Before I actually build any more on this, I wanna bring this down a couple blocks. I feel like this upper building should be a little bit taller. All right, let's take a look at this now. I moved it down a little bit and I think that looks a little bit better. I think that's a better size for that middle section. Now it's time to figure out what I'm going to do for the roof. Now I think we're going to have two different roof shapes. So on the right and the left of this little like middle section that's jutting out, this is just going to go straight up into the middle and then fall back down the other side. Let me go grab the roof blocks and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Hopefully I have enough. I really don't want to go to the nether and get more of the crimson stem, but... We'll see. So that'll be the roof for each of these sides. And then this middle section, we're just gonna change up the direction of the roof. We're gonna bring it this way. It turns out I actually had enough materials to finish off that roof. And I really like what this looks like. Definitely made a little mob farm under here though. So let's light this up. And now let's throw in the walls for this building in the middle. I put in the front wall of the building. Let's see what it looks like. Looking pretty solid in my opinion. Obviously way more decoration to do, but I'm definitely digging where I'm at right now. I just thought of something I actually want to add to the tops of each of these towers. I want to try to make like a small flag on each of them. I feel like that'll look really, really cool up here. I gotta be honest, I really did not know what to put on the flags. So I just made two stupid looking smiley faces and I kind of like them. <laughs> but if you guys have any other better ideas of what I should put on these flags, uh, let me know. I just think the idea of having a flag on top of each of these is really, really nice. And I think it's going to add to like the skyline super well here once everything is all built up. Let's transition now to working on the actual archway here that will let us in to the city. Now I'm just gonna throw down a floor that'll also act as like the ceiling in here. Just gonna use some trap doors, some slabs, and some regular wood just going all the way across here. Next up, I wanna throw in like the final few pillars that I didn't have in originally. Now I kinda just have to brainstorm a few ideas because uh, I'm really not sure what I'm doing here. I've been messing around for a little while and I think I'm comfortable with this design. I do need to go collect a little bit more oak wood though to finish the other side. I'm also running low on oak leaves, so we can collect those as well. The other side is now completed, so let's move on to the inside here. Or I'm not gonna go crazy decorating at the moment. I just wanna at least make it look a little less messy in here. And then we will move back to the outside to add the finishing touches to this build. I really just wanna add some walls on the inside here and then just a ceiling to cover everything. I know we kinda have this ceiling, but I want another one that's lower down. And now it looks like this on the inside, so it's very contained. That's kinda all I wanted to do. We can decorate this further a little bit more down the line. I really gotta get better at putting windows on my builds as I'm building them because I always do this. I always have a build that looks mostly good. It's just missing the windows. And then I always dread putting the windows on, like I am right now. I really don't want to do this. So I'm going to have to use so much scaffolding, go all the way up, back down again, all the way around. Ah, it's going to be such a hassle, but you know what? It'll be worth it. So let me figure out what kind of window design I want first. I'm thinking we use a couple different window designs. Now I'm going to use this one that I've used all over the place on like the first floor of the building. Very simple. Just have some upside down stairs, some trap doors and a slab and then fences on the side. And then of course in the middle, that's where the glass is going to go. So very simple window design there. Nothing too complicated. We've done that plenty of times before. Moving up though, it's going to get a little bit different. I want to see what this looks like. Now, in order to do the design that I'm thinking of, I actually had to get rid of the stairs and the trap doors that were right here. Let's see if we put three oak leaves and then surround that with some moss on the sides. Then from there, we just use fences, two trap doors, and a slab. Then I was thinking on either side here, we could put some azalea bushes. Maybe we can have the leaves like going down a little bit. I actually think I like that a little bit more, just so it's not super uniform. Not really able to put a window right here, so we're just gonna make a leaf box. And then this will be what the final design looks like for the towers. So we have to replicate this all the way around this tower and then all the way around the tower on the right. But before I do that, let me do the middle section. So then we can just replicate the whole thing all the way around. I think right here, it's going to be really simple since these windows are so small. We're just gonna have a trap door as like a window shutter and then a leaf block, surround that with signs. And I think I'm gonna call it there. Actually, I lied. Let me put a piece of moss on the right, put a sign in front of that and then we can put an azalea bush. And of course I have to leave a super secret message on one of the signs. As I do every single time, I use signs in this world. Now up directly above this section, in these middle two windows, 
I think I just want to do the basic design we did on the first floor. Then we have two more windows on either side. And for these windows, we're just going to kind of do the same design I did down here, just with two tall windows. And actually, I want to add one more thing to these windows that I think will just help a little bit more. I am trying to fly with a torch. What am I doing? My inventory is an absolute mess at the moment, but it's all good. All right, this is how I work in this game. Just let me go. <laughs> all you do is just put an extinguished campfire above and then open a fence gate underneath. And there you go. You got a little like cover for your window. And now with this done, I have the window decorations down for this entire building. We just have to replicate this all the way around. So let me go ahead and do that. And I'll be right back. All right, so the gatehouse is now officially completed. Now, I will be doing a run through with shaders on of everything I've built today at the end of the video. That's why I'm not using shaders at the moment. But even without shaders, the building still looks pretty solid. It is massive, though. It's a lot bigger than everything else I've built, which is exactly what I wanted. I wanted this city to look very grand, at least compared to everything I've built so far. But next up, before we start gathering materials and before we start building anything else, um, I need more shulker boxes. So I'm currently down to five. I distinctly remember having like three more, but uh, I have no idea where they went. I looked at all my chests and I cannot find them. So I kind of just want to go to the end. I want to fly around and smack up a whole bunch of shulkers. I'm not sure how many shulker boxes I want to shoot for, but I'm just going to go do this for a little while and we'll see how many we get. Now, before I go ahead and actually build up any of these buildings, I want to go ahead and figure out the pathway design that we're going to use for this entire city. And I've kind of come up with a block palette over here. We have a whole bunch of granite. We have some polished granite, some bricks, some regular terracotta, a couple different kinds of dirt, and some mud. Also, can't forget the spruce buttons just to, you know, spruce things up a little bit, I guess. Yeah, my bad. That... That was not good. I've carved out a rather small section, but this might be enough of the pathway for us today. If anything, I'll just, you know, cut out more and everything. But let's start throwing down these blocks now and see what I can come up with. And I think something like this looks pretty good. I tried to make it so that like the middle section is mostly dirt and mud, and then it'll gradually get to the granite on either side. So let me throw this design across this strip here. I made a small tweak here to the path design. Instead of having polished granite, I threw in the bricks instead. And I think I like what this looks like a little bit more. The last thing I want to do right now is I just want to throw some spruce buttons around this pathway. And this is going to be essentially the extent of the pathway that we make today. Now, I will be decorating this a lot more once we throw up a bunch of buildings. Speaking of these buildings, though, I think we should get started. And I'm going to time lapse these, considering there hasn't really been that many time lapses in this video so far. And I really don't think I'm going to have enough materials on me at the moment to complete all of these buildings. So I will most likely be back with some kind of progress report, but enjoy the time lapse. Here's a quick progress update. I have finished two of the buildings and I think they look pretty good. I like the size. I like the style. I think it's going to look super nice once we get a lot more of these all around. But as you can see, I'm running a little bit low on spruce wood and also on dark oak wood. If I can find wherever that shulker box is, I only have just under a stack of dark oak wood. So I definitely need to gather up both of those types of wood and also some oak because I think I'm going to use oak for the walls of one of these last two buildings. So let me go chop down a whole bunch of trees over here and then we'll be back to building. After I completed the last building, I wanted to go around adding a couple more different decoration pieces to this area. So I built up a couple carts, nothing too wild, but we have some moss on this one cart and also some copper on another one. I wanted to add a little bit more to the pathway as well. Obviously, eventually this is going to be a massive pathway winding throughout this entire area. 
but just for now I wanted to show kind of the directions it's going to go and lastly I wanted to add a couple market stands these are a little bit different from the ones that I added in last episode in the farming village but these are heavily inspired by another minecraft youtuber called disruptive builds I'll leave his link down in the description below but in one of his recent videos he was working on a village and he built up some market stands and I liked what they looked like so I used his as like the basis for my design but now that that's finished let's take a quick look at where we started today and what the build looks like now at the start of this video, this was just a regular looking vanilla Minecraft village. But 99 days later, all right, not 100, I did this under 100 days, um, 99 days later, it now looks like this. I really can't wait to add more buildings to this city. I think it's going to look really sweet once we add a whole bunch more. And maybe even like another castle down the line. I think that could look really cool here. But I'm very happy with the builds for today, especially the gatehouse. That turned out way better than I thought it was going to. And I hope that you guys also like the builds for this episode. Next time though, we will be tackling the interior. I wanna actually make this city useful to me. So I'm going to be adding a bunch of automatic farms on the inside of all these buildings. Thank you guys so much for the recent support on this series. It's been a wild. You guys really are the best. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Minecraft 1.20 just recently released and with the release of that update, we got a bunch of new blocks and new features. We got some new wood types. We got some new mobs. We got an entirely new like feature of the game with this new archeology span thing. And most importantly, we have empty bookshelves. There's a whole bunch of other things in this update that I didn't even mention just now, but in today's video, I would just like to explore the new 1.20 update. It's going to be a rather laid back episode of the hardcore series, but I do get to some building near the end of the episode. Thank you guys for watching and I really hope you enjoy. Now in order to find chunks that have the new 1.20 blocks and features in them, we're going to have to go to the nether and fly for a very long time. Because I've already explored a bunch of the chunks in the surrounding areas to me at the moment. So let me prepare for an adventure. The first thing I would like to do is I would like to make a brush. Now let me figure out how to do that. I think it's a stick, I think it's a copper ingot and a feather maybe? That's exactly how you craft one of these. So I got a brush now and we can use this on specific pieces of gravel and sand and we can uncover some goodies. But let me actually go ahead and see if I can enchant this. Now I definitely don't have any lapis on me so that's just the best. Um, I really hope there's some lapis here in a chest somewhere, and there is not. Well, can I even enchant this? I cannot. Okay, so there's no point of even coming here. You're gonna die. I am able to put unbreaking on this thing. I'm not sure if there's anything else, uh, but for now, I'm just gonna leave it at that, and I suppose we should give this thing a name. But let's use my buddy Franklin in the new chunks of this world, and hopefully we can uncover some cool things. All right, a block in the nether I think is eight blocks in the overworld, and I've traveled roughly like 2,800 blocks or so here in the nether. So surely I have not explored these chunks in the overworld yet. So let's see where this is going to take us. Please just take me into the new biome. Make it simple. Okay, well, I got an advancement. Use the nether to travel seven kilometers in the overworld. Okay, guess I never did that before. Um, this definitely seems like some new chunks. I actually really like this little beach we spawned in. Yeah, there's absolutely no way I've ever been here. I'm at negative 24,000. So I'm gonna save these coordinates so I can try to remember where this portal is. And let's start flying. This is a massive mangrove swamp, by the way. There is not one this large even kind of close to me. So this is kind of nice. I mean, I'll probably really never come back here. I guess unless I want to build anything on that beach I just saw because it is really cool looking. But this is not what we're here for. This is so last update. You gotta be honest, I haven't really looked into the wiki too much, so I don't really know where all these things spawn. And this is a really weird desert village, but this should actually have a new mob and it does, it has the camel. Hold on, let me, let me take a better look at this boy. Look at me go. On my guy, oh he's laying down. Really, really large fan of this guy. Sadly, I don't see any saddles around here. But it's all good. My guy can just uh, have another piece of cactus and live in this cool looking village forever. But this is a new piece of that sand. And I think this is a shard, maybe? No, it was a brick. Not exactly what I wanted. But let's hang around this warm ocean for a little while. Let me see if I can find one of like the ruins here at the bottom of the sea. Hey, we got some of the smithing armor trim things. Coast armor trim. I will definitely be taking those. I think this is one of the new sherds. It definitely is. Cool. This is another sherd. It's the same one. That's interesting. Oh, I just realized I'm in a lukewarm ocean. 
I think you might be able to only find the sniffer eggs in a warm ocean. Wait, I'm wrong. You can find them in here too. This is a sniffer egg. Awesome. I just need one more. While I'm going through and using my brush on all of this sus sand, I would like to talk about today's sponsor, which is me. All right. It's my channel. I recently activated the memberships on my channel. So you are now able to join. And I wanted to use this part in the video to get some suggestions from you guys, because as of right now, I only have one tier for the channel and that is called the shramalams and if you join this tier it's 2.99 a month you will get some loyalty badges next to your name and you will also be named an item in my hardcore world my idea is that i would like to have like an entire building or maybe like the basement of a big building or something like that where the walls are just lined with item frames named after members of the channel but this is where you guys kind of come in because i really can't think of anything else to add to this tier or to another tier so if you have any ideas please leave them in the comments down below. But if you would like to support the channel and also be named an item in this hardcore world, feel free to join. Hey, I got two more armor trims and they're actually the same ones as before. That's really cool. I got two more of those as well. I don't actually really know if I'm gonna need more than four of the same kind, but I'll still take them. And there is another sniffer egg. Sweet. All right, so I got both of those. Those are two things that I came down here for. So far, I have uncovered all of these things. And I think this is a good number to stop at because I got my two sniffer eggs. I have enough of the armor trims to fill out an entire set of armor. And we also have a couple of the sherds where we can make a few pots. Now the search is for the new biome. I need to get me some of these saplings. And this is exactly what I wanted to find. It really didn't take all that long. And it's really not a big biome. I find that these biomes are actually fairly small. I mean, this biome's uh, perfectly average sized. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> let's uh, let's gather some of these trees. But this is the new wood, cherry logs. I really like this wood. I think it looks awesome. It's nice looking when it's stripped, and it's also really nice looking as planks. I would also like to take some of these, these pink petals. I'm pretty sure you can bone meal these at home, and you can keep getting a bunch because these are really nice too. So let me grab a couple of these, throw them in this shulker box. And this is essentially what we came out for, all the stuff in this shulker right here. Now the problem I'm facing is uh, I have to fly back home. So I'm in the nether now, and actually the more I think about it, I kind of want to try to find a bastion. Because bastions are where you can find the material or the item or whatever in order to make netherite in this new update. They changed how you can get netherite. And we have ourselves a bastion over here. Now... I just gotta make sure I'm really careful. These things are terrifying, even with all the armor I have. I'm gonna venture off and look for another bastion. I looted a lot of chests in that one. I'm not sure if I looted them all, but let's just move on to a different one. And actually we have one right here. That's kind of wild. Hey, I got one of them. That guy scared the hell out of me. I'm not gonna lie. Sweet. I don't really want to overstay my welcome because uh, I might die. Those brutes still hit so incredibly hard, it's insane. We're now back home, and that was a very successful little adventure. Now, I'm fairly certain you just need one of these templates for each piece of armor, and then, of course, you need the pieces of armor themselves, and then some gemstone. And I'm going to use emeralds, I think. I'm going to see what this looks like originally. And you do also need a smithing table, I believe. So let's see. You put that down, put this down, put this down. And then we get green armor trims on the armor. Oh, that's so cool. I think I want to do green. Green's my favorite color. I think it's going to look really cool with the netherite. So let's go ahead and do that. And might as well get everything to match with the same template. I think we're looking pretty sick over here, man. I really like the green. This isn't like a massive feature in this update, but this is probably one of my favorites. I really like this. Now, I don't know what the rarest armor trim is. Personally, I haven't really looked much into it or if there is one that's more rare than the others I imagine there has to be some that are more rare because I found all of these like right away There's no way this coast armor trim is rare because I found six pretty fast And then the reason why we only need one of these smithing templates is because you can duplicate them So let me take a bunch of diamonds and I think it's nether rack So if you put it into the crafting table like that, you will get two in return So after that stack of diamonds, I made ten and yeah, whatever, I might have used a stack of diamonds on that, but diamonds really aren't that valuable to me other than this, so I'm fine. I also have nearly a stack of diamond ore too. 
that I can harvest if I need it. The next thing on the agenda then is I want to make a little sniffer enclosure. So then we can actually plant these eggs and then we can have these sniffers dig up these cool like ancient flowers. The new flowers look sick. I'm a big fan of the torch flower one. But let me go see what I have in my storage room in terms of materials and we can start building up this little enclosure. I would like to use spruce wood for this enclosure but uh, we really don't have any. Also I would like to incorporate some oak so let me go ahead and collect those blocks. After taking a quick nap of course. We should have enough materials now. I don't really think I'm going to need much more wood than this. It's not going to be that big of an enclosure, but I'm thinking a good spot is right here. So let me break down this fence and then we can make a little entrance for this thing. Now I've already built a really similar entrance to this before in the Halloween like spooky village over that way. This was the entrance to get into the pumpkin patch. Now it's a very simple looking entrance, but I think it looks pretty nice. And the last thing we have to do is just put some fences in the middle. And then probably some fence gates so we can actually get in and the animals cannot get out. I want to make these walls at least like one and a half blocks high, obviously, so the sniffers cannot get out. But just for now, I'm just going to go around with some spruce wood and we're going to outline this thing. This shape is looking pretty good. I think that's a big enough area for a couple sniff guys to be walking around. And I'm going to be decorating these walls very similarly to these farms we have over here. But obviously, instead of using the stone blocks, we're going to be using wood types. So just imagine this, but with some spruce wood and some oak wood. So here's a very, very small subsection of this entire place, but it's going to look like this all the way around. It's nothing too complicated, but I think it looks really nice. So let me just go complete this and I'll be back when the wall's done. I'm fairly certain things are not able to get in or out of here, but let's go ahead and actually put down the sniffer eggs, which if you put on moss, they hatch faster. Not sure if these things need to be a certain number of blocks away from each other, but uh, here we go. Hopefully we have some sniffers in a little while. I want to make some of the new hanging signs for this area. And I want to make them out of the cherry wood because why not? And it turns out you need the stripped version of the wood in order to make the hanging signs. So let me go ahead and grab a little bit of this. And then the only other thing you need to make these signs is some chains. I threw three of the signs down. We got sniffer guys. We got sniffs because that's what's going to be in here. And then we got horse guy for the stable back here. These signs are super cool, by the way. You can hang them over like this. You can, you know, kind of drop them straight down. I really like them. All right, the eggs are cracking a little bit. We are getting a little bit closer to getting some of these sniff guys on the team. So I think with the addition of the two signs here, uh, this little enclosure is finished. Now, the next thing I want to do in this episode is something new that I want to try out in every episode. So let me pass you guys off to me editing this video. In the last episode, I started building my city, and I would like to have a segment in every video where I build at least one new building in this city. Now, there's going to be episodes dedicated to the city in its entirety, so I'm probably going to build up a lot more than one building, but I just want to make it a point that I would like to build at least one building in every single episode. So if you guys would like to see how large the city actually becomes, definitely go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. But the building for today is actually the same color palette as a previous building I've already built in this city. It has the stone walls going up to like the white color blocked walls and then the roof is out of the prismarine blocks and some of the warped stem and stuff like that really like this color combination in the roof probably one of my favorite roof designs in this world so far so I'm going to be using this all over this city for sure. But this building is actually going to be a library. I want to use a lot of the empty bookshelves, the new block in this build. I think it's going to look fantastic on the inside. And I uh, definitely don't pay too much attention to the fact that this building is entirely floating. I will work on the terraforming for sure down the line. But now let's give it back to Shram recording this video. Now I'm about to say something that I may have never said before. I'm going to do the interior of this building. I know, it's incredibly shocking. Your boy does not do interiors very often. But I've gathered up a handful of different materials here in these chests, but there are a few more I still have to gather. And one of those is the new block, the empty bookshelves. They're actually just called chiseled bookshelves. You need planks and you need slabs. So let's just go craft up a ton of these. Might as well use some birch. I don't really use birch for much else. All right, we have just over two stacks of these chiseled bookshelves. Hopefully that's enough. I have a whole bunch of books over here as well, so we can actually customize these different bookshelves. And I might as well grab some regular bookshelves. I do want to take some item frames as well, because I would like to use this lantern design 
that I discovered when I was making my house with the new 1.20 blocks. So I'm gonna waste two decorated pots here. We can always go find some more. But the idea is that you put the decorated pots down, you connect it to the ceiling with a lightning rod, and then you use glow item frames all around it. Which actually means I need some glow squid ink sack things. I actually don't know if I have any of those. That's all right, I'll pop down into a cave and grab some. But let me go ahead and grab two lightning rods. I actually don't think I've ever crafted these. I need one more. That's annoying. So let's just pop down to this cave over here. I'm sure I can find some copper and some glow squid. All right, so we got a little bit of copper right here and I don't have the right pickaxe. Hold on. All right, obviously that is more than enough. And now let's go find some squid. 11 glow ink sacks should be more than enough. All right, we got some glow item frames. I actually think I only needed eight, but I'll make 11. That's not a big deal. And now hopefully this should be all the materials we need to do this interior. There's probably some stuff I'm forgetting, but I can always come back, I suppose. Let's grab these shulker boxes and let's head over to the new build. And as I'm heading over there, I would like to ask you guys a quick question. So as you can tell, my leaves are not looking very good. They're looking like the Minecraft leaves, just the normal ones, right? Because every time I put on my resource pack, the leaves just look super like neon green. I feel like they're not supposed to look like this. It just does not look right. They still look okay with shaders on and everything, but I don't understand why the oak leaves look so weird without shaders on. Like, I feel like this is just too neon. So if anybody can give me a little bit of insight on this, I'd be super appreciative. Just for now, until I figure out the fix for that, I'm just gonna keep the regular leaves on. I wanna try to use some of the new wood in this floor. I wanna see if this looks good. My idea is that I would use some purple terracotta and just some of the cherry logs, and we can do something like this. So let's get the logs kind of bordering the outside. Something like that, and then we put the purple terracotta in the middle, and I kinda like this floor design. Now, I would also like to have a second floor. I think for that second floor, though, we just use some spruce slabs, maybe some stripped spruces, as well for the floor. Yeah, it looks decent as a room up here. Okay, I'll worry about this second floor in a minute. Let me start working on the first floor. But now comes the fun part. Let's put down the bookshelves. Now, I definitely want to work in some full bookshelves for sure. That's looking pretty decent. Let me grab the books and we can fill in the rest. Also, while I'm here, might as well make some chests and throw in there. Why not? Looks pretty cool. Put a lantern up there. And now the books. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Let's start throwing these all over the place then. I'm gonna kind of just replicate this all the way around. We'll probably throw some carpet in here too. And this is looking pretty decent. It's kind of just a whole bunch of bookshelves, but I sort of wanted it this way. And I think for these side rooms, we're just gonna make a couple tables and this is going to mainly kind of act as storage. So something just like this, and then we can replicate it on this side. Last thing I want to throw down is just some carpet. Yeah, I think the carpet's kind of tying everything together here. I think I could probably add like one more thing. Let's throw some composters in some spots. And we'll put some leaves on there. If only these were the really bushy leaves, but you know what? They'll do the trick for now. All right, so the first floor I think in here is complete. There's not too much space in this building. I probably should have made it bigger, but we use the new block, so it's looking pretty nice. Now, I actually do need a way to the second floor. So I think the best way to do that is honestly just throw a ladder in here. I'm not a huge fan of just putting ladders in buildings to get to the second floor, but it works in here. A building this tiny, I think it's kind of fine for. Let me go ahead and grab some of the spruce and we can start throwing some pillars in here as well. I'm trying to cover up where I didn't put walls in. Now that those are in, I'm gonna put on a ceiling. And I sort of want to keep it with this theme, like the prismarine blocks. And once again, I actually have to fly back to my storage room to go grab them. Where did my sniffers go? How did you guys get out? Maybe they can walk over more blocks than I'm thinking. I'm gonna put this guy back in, try to find his friend, and then watch him for a little while and see how they got out. Hold on. Actually, he's sniffing something up. What do we get? Pitcher pod. That's cool. We got one of the new items. Um, are they able to, like, jump out of there? Maybe? Found the other lad. Just doing his thing, sniffing around but you gotta do that over here, okay? I'll check back on them in a little while. Hopefully they actually stay there. But let's move back to this and let's do the second floor. For the roof in here, I think I'm just going to mainly do dark prismarine and warped blocks. That should look pretty cool. I do actually have to go back to the storage room though because I have to put one more layer of these white blocks on top. It's actually kind of impressive how bad I am at getting the materials I need. Another change I actually wanna make here, which I think could actually look really cool, is I'm gonna bring these spruce beams across. Then we can also place some stairs and trap doors to make this like a nice little archway. I think that's looking pretty sick. Cool. I kinda wanna stick with the prismarine theme and I wanna put a table up here. Maybe just something like as small as this and then we can also break in a few of these warped slabs. Gonna put in a couple deep slate chairs and we're gonna surround those with spruce signs. Oh, I can't put a sign there, no. We have to space these out even more then actually. And just to add a little bit more interest to this table, I'll put a few like stripped stems 
I think it's looking pretty cool. And then from here, we can just kind of add the same like shelving decorations we had downstairs with the bookshelves. The bookshelves are in. I just have to actually place in all the books now. So let's go ahead and do that. I also went ahead and sprinkled some barrels all around and some chests and stuff just to fill out the walls a little bit more. I think we should also throw this decorated pot lantern design thing up here. I'll put them both up here because I think it'll fit. It should look something just like this with the pot and then decorated around with the glow item frames. Doesn't really emit too much light, but I think it looks sick. I'm gonna throw down a few lanterns up here as well, just to give myself some actual good light sources. And with that final addition, I think this build is completely done. Let's take a quick look at the build with shaders on. And here's a look at the new addition to the city. Of course, this is the library. I also decided to make the terrain look a lot smoother and I added in the rest of the pathway. So it's looking pretty schnazzy, if you ask me. The empty bookshelves were definitely the thing I was most excited for when this update got announced. So I figured it was only fitting if I made an entire building that's pretty much dedicated just to this block. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I know I didn't really make too much progress in this world, but I kind of wanted to try a more chill episode where I just kind of explore the new stuff. Thanks for watching one final time. I really hope you guys enjoyed and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. I think my Minecraft world looks pretty awesome, right? I think I made a lot of really cool builds in this world, but not many of them are practical. There's a whole bunch of just filler buildings in this world. Not really that many of them serve a real purpose. And I would like to change that today. In a recent episode, I built this city that I'm currently walking through right now and I left every single one of these buildings empty. But I would like to convert each of these buildings into a little shop front that has an automatic farm in the basement. There are a total of four empty buildings in this area, so that means I'm going to have to make four automatic farms. Let's get started. Before I start working on the main focal point of this episode, we have something very important we have to do. The channel now has its first member. So that means I have to rename a block after that person. They wanted to be some kind of nature block and they specifically said they like moss blocks. So let me introduce everybody to Glitch McGamer Mom 7180 the brand new moss block in this world. Now, if you would like to get named after a block of your own in my hardcore series, you can head down to the join link in the description down below where you can become a channel member. So far, I only have one tier. It's called the Shramalam. So if you join that tier, you are guaranteed to be named a block in my world. Now, I wanna make a full building dedicated to all of the members eventually. I'm thinking I make another castle in one of the next couple of episodes. But until then, I'm just gonna put every member in this chest. So welcome to the world, Glitch McGammer Mom. I will definitely put you up on an item frame once we make the build. And my very temporary plan is to try to, you know, start that build next episode. I think it'll be a building in the city. I'm thinking about having like a nice castle maybe over there. And either the whole castle or maybe just the basement I can, you know, make for the members. But enough talking about next episode. All right, let's focus on this one. I would like to put an automatic farm in every single one of these buildings, probably in the basement. As of right now, we have four unoccupied buildings in this town. Of course, last time we built this one, which is fully taken up on the inside. We have a nice little library here now. And I don't believe I'm gonna have an automatic farm under this one. I might change my mind, but as for now, I don't have any plans. I do, however, have plans for this building. This is gonna be the first one we tackle today. I use moss quite often, and I like bone mealing the grass around my areas. So I figured I should probably make a moss and a bone meal farm at some point in this world. I'm pretty certain you can combine those two farms together because moss farms produce a lot of extra stuff that can be composted down into bone meal. So the first of these farms is going to be a moss farm in this building. But before we can get to that, I have to do the rest of this interior. So let me go ahead and get this interior done. I think this looks pretty nice in here. It's just a nice little shop. We have a bunch of moss stuff kind of, you know, acting as inventory that this place would sell. We have a couple of like potted azalea bushes as well. Also just some leaves back here behind the counter. I think it's looking pretty cool in here. And no, I didn't do the upstairs. I don't really think I'm going to do the second floor of many of these buildings. Maybe some of them if I kind of feel like it. But right now, I just don't really know what to do and I kind of just like this little store down here. From here then, I'm sure we could just have like a drop shoot, like a water drop shoot over here uh, to take us down underground to the actual moss farm. But before I actually start working on any of the automatic farms, let me go ahead and finish off all of these interiors. Oh man, wasn't that just the sickest transition of all time? Um, anyway, all the interiors are done now. <laughs> I've already showed off this one, so let's hop over to this building, which is my bamboo shop farm thing like obviously the bamboo farm's gonna go underneath 
much like every other farm here. But here's a little interior I did for bamboo stuff. Love this chair design. I saw it on Twitter and I really apologize because I have no idea uh, who tweeted it. It was just like on, you know, like how you can have like the For You page now on Twitter. It was on there. I didn't follow the guy, so I'm not sure who it was. But this is a great chair design with a piece of scaffolding and then a bamboo trap door. Looks so good. Love that. Let's move on to this building over here then, which is, of course, my pumpkin and melon shop. I wanted to originally put the pumpkin farm in like the spooky village, but I kind of just never got around to it. So we're going to have it right here. But we have a couple shelves for like pumpkins and melons. I really like the shelf design. A couple leaves as well that are potted in some composters. And of course, like a little cash register area over there. And this final house back here is our carrot and potato shop with also some hay bales. Now, I'm going to have a carrot and a potato farm underneath here. I'm not going to have a wheat farm because I'm pretty sure you need a Lay's for that, at least for one design, and I don't really feel like bothering with them. So we're just going to set up like the typical villager produced potato and carrot farm. I think those things produce pretty well, and it'll give me all the carrots and potatoes I'm ever going to need. I mainly want the carrots because I can probably set up a gold farm in the near future just to have unlimited golden carrots. I've been buying my golden carrots from villagers, so technically I already do have unlimited, but it's a lot less tedious of a process if you just have a gold and a carrot farm. But now, of course, we have to start working on the actual farms underground, and that's going to require a lot of digging. So let me fly over to this beam sticking out of the ground so I can pick up my beacon. Now let's take this beacon and I'm just going to set it up over here somewhere. Hopefully it can actually uh, be reached everywhere I'm going to be in this city. And I'm going to begin by clearing out the underground area of the moss farm. I feel like this is probably big enough. I can always go bigger once I'm building, I guess, but this should at least be a good start. I should also mention that I'm going to be using YouTube to look up some tutorials on how to make all of these farms, uh, because I'm definitely nowhere near smart enough to figure out how to make any of these on my own. Uh, so if you'd like to look at any of these farms more in depth, head on down to the description below where I'm gonna have a link for every single farm that I make in this video. I will also be time-lapsing these builds. So let me go ahead and cut it away to a time-lapse right now. I'm fairly certain this thing is working. I had a little bit of a hiccup while I was building this. Um, I couldn't get it to work completely properly, but I think we're good now. So we have this chest here, which should generate moss and moss stuff. I'm gonna just watch it for a little while. Let me see if something changes. Okay, yeah, the moss is going up. So we are gathering moss. This one should be gathering bone meal. That went up from 46 to 47. So we are very slowly also getting some bone meal. And then I assume this line, like, refuels the whole farm? I don't really know. But yeah, I don't know if I built it incorrectly, but originally there was, like, a chest here that was supposed to collect the bone meal, but it wasn't getting any bone meal at all. I waited for a while and nothing happened. So I kind of just redirected the hopper lines, like, over here. But the important thing is, I'm fairly certain this is a working moss and bone meal farm. So that's very nice. Now that the first farm here is up and running, let's move on to the second farm, which is a bamboo farm. Once again, though, I'm going to begin the bamboo farm by just digging out an area. I'm gonna start with a room this size. We can always expand this if I need to. But let me go ahead and gather all the materials for this farm and then I will cut away to a time lapse of me actually building it. And now we have a bamboo farm. It's very small. Or actually, uh, it's at least average sized. I would say. I feel like some would probably even say it might be too big of a uh, bamboo. F okay, I'm done with the, done with those jokes. Um, anyway, though, yeah, we we finished the bamboo farm. I think it's working. I'm probably gonna AFK here for a little while and actually see if this thing does work. While I'm waiting, I guess I should also say that I think if I ever actually need a crap ton of bamboo down the line, like if I want to make like a really big like bamboo wood building, I will probably make like the flying machine powered bamboo farm because that one's far more efficient. But I think this will probably be good enough for me for a little while. I can always add one more of these like over here. I went back and added some light to make sure the bamboo can grow better, which I think is a thing. Could be a myth, I don't really know. But once I added this light, these two pieces actually grew. So now we wait. Wow. 
All right, so it looks to be working. Uh, the only small issue I'm seeing is it looks like the bamboo can get caught on other pieces of bamboo. I don't know how much loss that's going to make, but I'm honestly not super worried about it because it's already growing back. This might get pushed off eventually. All that bamboo was picked up in the hopper. So once that goes all the way down here again, it should unload everything. And that actually just naturally fell. All right, good to know. So this thing should be fully functional. Then we'll come back and check on it in a little while to see how it's producing. And this next farm is going to be a pumpkin and a melon farm. I'm gonna save the uh, villager powered farm for last because I really don't wanna deal with villagers right now. So once again, let's start by cutting away a lot of stone underground. We have the room dug out here for the pumpkin and melon farm, so let's cut away to a time lapse and let's build this thing. Now this abomination um, should be a working pumpkin and melon farm. Did not mean to break that. The tutorial said to use glass here, but I didn't have any extra sand and I didn't really feel like going to harvest any so I just use some orange terracotta it's fine it still works it's not necessary that it is glass but as you can tell this farm is working we have a couple melon slices down here and we're unloading a little bit more let's go 11 melon slices looking sick now hopefully this thing produces well if anything I could always just stack another one on top it was pretty easy to make of course then next up we have to deal with villagers I'm kind of dreading this because every time I have to deal with villagers something pretty bad happens uh, they never cooperate properly I'm probably gonna kill a couple of them, but we're gonna do our best. Um, like the other three farms though, let me start by clearing out the underground area of the next building. For the last time today, we have a room dug out underneath one of the houses. And I'm feeling a little bit adventurous, all right? Feeling a little saucy. I kind of want to try to do this one on my own without a tutorial. I think I can do it. I don't have too much faith in myself to make this like actually working, but I have enough faith to give it a try. So let me hit my storage room again, gather up all the materials, and then we will cut away to another time lapse. I actually did have to look up a video just to make sure I got this like inner compartment thing correct because I was a little confused. All right, I tried my best, but I was definitely a little confused. <laughs> but I think I have something that will work. The idea is that you put a villager in here and then you have a farming villager in this farm and this farm. The farming villager will just harvest the farm naturally and replant it and then try to throw food every once in a while to the villager in the middle, but these hopper minecarts will intercept the food and it'll go into these two chests. But now comes the extremely fun part of getting some villagers. So I guess let's go ahead and build a massive minecart track going all the way over to the city. There are no villagers in the farm. Please do not tell me I turned it off a while ago and forgot to turn it back on. The farm wasn't turned off. At least I don't think it was. Um, but I lost my farmer. I got rid of this slab thinking that I used that to turn the farm off. And uh, yeah, the, the farmer walked down there. Let's go on a very short rescue mission. There we go. Good, you're in the farm again. All right, need you to make babies. I think I know what I can do to speed up the process. There we go. All right, come on. You, you got this. I can, maybe I can put on some tunes. Doesn't seem to be working. All right, let me go get some food. Hey, it worked. All right, you produced a little man. But once this gym grows up, I need to know if villagers take damage in a minecart, like from a fall. I can definitely look that up, but that's a lot less fun. You know what I might actually do to speed up the process? I have a bunch of villagers in all of these houses. And uh, yeah, I'm just gonna take three of them. All right, the villager is off. Um, I really wanna see if it takes fall damage. <laughs> you might have to be sacrificed for this, but it'll be worth it, I promise. I guess probably not for you though. They do take fall damage. Next little experiment. Is this enough fall damage to kill a villager? <laughs> How did you even do that? Get out of the food. He's definitely dead, yeah, okay. Um. Well, that's a little sad. All right, for science, test number two. Let me put a water source down there. Maybe that'll break the fall. Okay, test subject number two is approaching.
Uh, that was crazy, dude. The second test subject just despawned. I don't even know. You know, I don't. I don't know that happened. That's that's weird. It must have been like a glitch or something. Um, I guess let's go get a third one. Third time's the charm, right? That's what they say. Alrighty, test subject number three is on their way. Good feeling about this one. Very good feeling. No way it goes wrong again, right? Jim, look at me. You're a champion. You can do this. You're gonna make your family proud. Or they're gonna be incredibly distraught. Let's see what happens. The first gym was an absolute chad. How did... All right, uh, <laughs> I'm beginning to think we need a new approach. All right, so no possible way that this one can go wrong. All right, moment of truth. Let's go. You're a champion. Now, second drop, just prepare yourself. Hopefully you wore your bathing suit. And we've secured one. All right, here we go. How have you managed that? Like, get out of the stone. Like, what? All right, we have a proven system that works. Now, I think I can probably destroy that minecart, but I don't want to risk the villager glitching through, like, a wall or something. So, I'm just going to let it go like this, and let's see if we can get two more villagers. And I think we are up and running. All right, that was only, like, the fourth most annoying thing I did in this world, so... You know, definitely could have been worse. In every episode of this hardcore series, I would like to expand my city. Now, I know I did a lot of work in the city itself today, but I didn't actually expand anything. All the work I did was interior. I also wanted to do something different than just making another building. So today we are going to make a garden and also like a central point of this entire city. Now, I knew I wanted to make this platform a really big, like round-ish shape. So I tried to just freehand one to begin. Uh, but that looked awful, so I promptly took that down, and then I consulted this little diagram graph thing that kind of tells you how to make a circle uh, with a given diameter. Went ahead and roughly made one of these circles. It didn't have to be completely perfect looking because I knew I was going to mess it up in the end. I didn't want it to be completely symmetrical. But after I got that nice outer ring that I wanted, I went ahead and threw in the path design going all the way around. The idea for this area is to have a nice pathway that is circulating around the central garden. So once I had that pathway designed down, I went ahead threw in a whole bunch of grass and started outlining where the garden is going to go. I decided to go with a combination of cobblestone, mossy cobblestone, tough stone, and moss for the walls of this garden. And once I was happy with a design for the outline of the garden, I decided to move on to the inside and I started building a whole bunch of custom trees. I've pretty much used the same custom tree design I have in my entire area, making some oak and some birch ones. I wanted to give this garden a little bit more life on the inside, so I went through and bone milled all the exposed grass, added in a few benches as well, just to make it feel like people would actually walk through here. And I'm very content with the end result of this garden. I think it looks really nice. I wanted to also decorate the pathway going around this thing. So I just threw down the same cart and the same stall design that we had in the rest of the city so far. Then I decided I wanted a bit of extra light in this area, so I came up with a lamppost design and threw in a couple of those. And with those lampposts in place, this build is completely done. So let's take a quick look at this entire area now with shaders on. And I am massively in love with this centerpiece to this city. I never really mentioned it before, but I kind of plan on having four different streets branching off of this area, and each of the streets are going to be very similar to the street we already constructed. So this will definitely pose as the absolute center point for this village, and I think it fits that vibe perfectly. But that is everything that I have for you guys for this episode. I really hope you enjoyed this one. I think we made a good amount of progress, both just building up the city and also just in the world in general, allowing myself to get some more resources automatically. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye. I'd like to give a really quick disclaimer for this video before it actually starts. I will also put a timestamp on the screen. If you would like to skip this part, you can go right to the start of the video. Um, but recently, my girlfriend and I moved into a new apartment, and honestly, that's why this video has taken so long to actually come out, but here we are, finally. Um, but in this new apartment, I have my own office, and this office is essentially empty. All that's here right now is my desk with my setup, and there's nothing to absorb the sound, so the echo is horrible in this room. I did order some like sound absorbent foam, but it's not coming until the middle of this week, and I really wanted to get this video out today. So I just wanted to say that a good portion of this video, the audio is not great. I'm doing my best. I'm trying to edit out the echo as best as I can. It's just kind of difficult to completely get rid of echo. I don't really know if you actually can. There's a pretty cool little thing I can do in my editing software to help, but it still doesn't do as much as I would like. So my bad for this. I hope the audio quality isn't too bad. It should get fixed. 
hopefully by the end of the week and then my next episode we'll have normal audio again there are some parts in this video though that were recorded at the old place so that sounds fine it's just the newer stuff that i recorded just not sounding the best thank you so much for watching though and i hope you enjoy the video now in episode three of this series i build this castle it's not the greatest looking castle but i think for being my first ever castle and for it mainly being a freehand build it's not too bad it's also quite practical this is where i store all of my villagers that i still trade with today but in today's episode i plan on building a far bigger and a far more intricate castle the castle i plan on building is heavily inspired by another minecraft creator his name is either Inky or Incy, I don't know how it's pronounced, but a link to his channel will be down in the description below, and I'll talk a little bit more about the inspiration I took from him later in the video. But without further ado, let's get started with this episode. Now between last episode and this episode, I have gained three new YouTube members. So that means I have to add three new named blocks into this world. And I would like to do that now before I actually get started with the main build of this episode. The blocks have all been named, so let me welcome Lou the Toilet, Maddie Jane, and Andrew with a smiley face. This is my IRL friend, Andrew, so <laughs> that's why I added the smiley face. Um, but they're all going to be added into this chest along with Glitch McGamer Mom, who was the first YouTube member. I've alluded to this already, but if you'd like to be named a block in this world, you can head down to the description below, click on the join link to my channel, and you can go ahead and join and become a Shramalam. I only have one tier at the moment, but I'm thinking of a few others uh, that I could potentially add in the future, but the current one I have gets you a block named in this world. And don't worry, I'm going to be moving them out of this chest, probably in this episode, because the castle that we're going to be building is going to be the home of all the YouTube members and probably some other things, but I think the main portion of that building is going to be for the YouTube members. Speaking of this castle though, um, we should go ahead and start working on it. We have to gather a lot of materials. I'm using this mod called Lightmatica. A lot of other Minecraft content creators also use this mod. I'll describe it more in depth like later on in this video, uh, but just as for right now, I'm going to go ahead and look at the material list of my castle, and as you can see, we need to gather a lot of stuff. Ignore the grass blocks and the dirt. They're not actually part of the build. I guess I just accidentally copied those when I was, you know, doing this. It doesn't matter. Um, but, you know, the warped planks, strip warp stem, stone, dark prismarine. We have to get a lot of those blocks. And the block I want to focus on right now is probably the most annoying one in this list to gather. And it's the dark prismarine. We do have a guardian farm. So we're good on some of the recipe. But, you know, in order to make a dark prismarine... You need ink sacks, or specifically black dye. And considering I do not want to go ahead and gather 1,071 ink sacks, like by hand, just going around and smacking up some squid, I'm going to go ahead and build a squid farm in the spawn chunks. Hopefully I'm able to do that. I think you might need like a river. I don't think I could just put water down and squid would spawn. I, I honestly have no idea how it works, but I'm hoping I have a river in my spawn chunks and I actually think I do. Just like nearly every farm in this world, uh, yeah, I'm nowhere near smart enough to build one of these on my own without any kind of extra help. So I decided to go to YouTube and I found a pretty good looking squid farm and it doesn't really require all that many materials. The link to this farm will be in the description below if you would like to build it yourself. The only material that I actually have to go gather is some sand because I need like three and a bit stacks of glass and as you can see uh, we don't have any sand and we have one piece of glass so that's probably not gonna cut it um <laughs> let me go ahead and collect some sand let's go throw all the sand down into the super smelter in my cave village that I built a couple episodes back while the rest of this is smelting let's go ahead and compile the rest of the materials that really did not take long at all. There's not many materials for this farm. But let's head back to spawn and let me actually see if I can build this there. Now the thing with this farm is that we do need a river biome in order for it to be made. And I'm not sure if this area is in spawn chunks or not. I think this is probably the closest river biome we have. I'm still gonna try over here just in case it is. But now that we actually found an area where we can build this thing, I say we just cut it to a time lapse until I'm done building.
After I built the squid farm, I decided to stream myself gathering a whole bunch of materials. And I stream here on YouTube, so if you would like to stop by for a future stream, make sure you're subscribed to the channel, and maybe consider hitting that notification bell icon so you get notified every time I upload or every time I go live. Throughout this stream, I gathered three blocks. I gathered the, like, teal nether wood block, I completely forgot the name of it right now. Um, but I needed a crap ton of this stuff, so I gathered, I think, more than a shulker box of it. I gathered a bunch of spruce. Of course, it's your boy. I use more spruce than, I think, most content creators, or just most Minecraft players, probably. I use a ton of spruce wood because it's the best-looking wood. It has the best blocks. That's just not an opinion. It, it is straight up just a fact. And then I also gathered some deep slate, another block that I use all over the place because it's a very nice looking block with a ton of different variants. After my stream for the next couple of days, I would continue gathering a whole lot of materials, but many of the materials I needed, I actually kind of already had. I needed a lot of stone. I needed some tough, some cobblestone. I had all that in my storage room. And also I just needed to go through the process of crafting everything down into the individual blocks that were needed for this build. But after I gathered all of those materials, it was finally time for me to fix my squid farm because my squid farm was broken. It just wasn't working at all. Uh, my plan was to take the limited number of sponges that I had and make little water canals and drain out the water all around the farm to limit the spawning area for the squid to only within the farm. Um, but that also really didn't work. It took me like an hour and a half going around draining out water and uh, I saw like no progress. So I regret to inform all you guys. Um, I decided to take matters into my own hands and uh, swim around killing like every squid I saw. Wow. This honestly didn't feel great. Uh, squids are pretty chill mobs. They kind of just hang out, vibe underwater, and like sometimes suffocate on sand. Uh, I don't know, they, they don't really do anything. So I felt bad <laughs> kind of destroying an entire ecosystem of squid, but it's fine. Uh, you know, it's Minecraft, they're gonna respawn. We're all good. Once I did that though, for like an hour and a half, uh, I got all the ink sacks I needed to make all of the dark prismarine I needed. And at this point, I was actually 100% done gathering materials. So let me pass you guys off to Shram in the past with better audio quality. Gathering those materials took a really long time, but here we are, we have everything. Now, if I hit the load schematics button again and I go to the material list, you can see everything here is green except for the things we actually don't need. I don't need that grass, I don't need that dirt. And I also don't need these seven acacia logs. I was trying to do something with, with shading with the stone and stuff, and I just did not like uh, what I came up with, and I guess I didn't get rid of all the acacia logs. But anyway, everything here is green. That means we have everything that we need for this build. I also went absolutely overkill with the stripped spruce logs, but it's fine. I'm sure I will use those in the future. Uh, now I would like to kind of talk about how Lightmatica works a little bit more in depth, uh, just in case you guys don't know how it works. I don't want anyone to think that this is like me completely cheating and I'm just, you know, in creative mode or something like something weird. I don't know. So the way that Lightmatica works is that you are able to copy a blueprint of a build and paste it wherever you want. That includes in another world, but I already have this entire castle built in a creative world. And then with Lightmatica, I was able to copy the blueprint and I can move it over to this world, which I'm going to place down right now. But I believe it's going to go up here. And I feel like this is a pretty good height. I might have to like extend uh, like the cliff or the, the little hill here a little bit more because the, the castle might be bigger than this. But I do think this is a pretty good height to at least begin. So let me place down the blueprint. I now have the schematic placed down and without showing too much of it, let me kind of display how this mod works. So as you can see, there's tough, there's some cobblestone, there's like a stone slab right here. It looks like this is all here, but it's actually like holographic. Like I can walk through this. So it's not actually here yet. But if I were to put tough right here, you can see that the blocks fill in and the hologram goes away. But now let's say instead of putting the tough here, I would have put cobblestone here instead you can see that it shows up red because that's not the correct block. So all this tool does is just make really large builds a lot more accessible and way easier to do in survival. I don't really want to use this for smaller scale builds. I still think I like doing those just from scratch in the world itself. But when it comes to a build of this size, this just makes my life so much easier. And I think it'll make for a better final product in the end. But now that I've explained that, let me go ahead and actually build this castle.
here's a look at the completed castle. But I think it's going to look a lot better once we throw on shaders. I'm really proud of how this build turned out. Honestly, this is probably my new favorite build that I've ever made. But I feel like every time I build something big, I'm going to keep saying that. Anyway, uh, I really like this one. And now I kind of want to talk about what kind of inspiration I exactly took from Inky. I'm just going to call him that. I'm sorry. I don't I don't know if it's Inky or Incy. I'm going to go Inky. Um, but in his builds, he used like a fire block palette for the gradient of the walls. I really liked that design, but I wanted to put my own twist on it and kind of go like the opposite direction. I wanted to make the colors of my castle much colder. So in contrast to his castle, mine is going to be called the Midnight Castle. I was kind of going for like a Northern Lights kind of vibe with the colors. I wanted to work in some purple as well, but I kind of couldn't get it to work well with the gradient. So I kind of just went... Uh, with like the teal to the green and I think it looks really sick in my opinion but I very much hope you guys enjoyed this one I hope you like the build as well thank you so much for watching one final time and I'll talk to you soon bye it is officially the best time of the year and if you don't agree with me just take a look at this tree isn't that just like a really good tree doesn't it just like make you feel super cozy I don't know it does for me the trees look like this now so honestly automatically it's the best time of the year but other than the trees just looking cool, football season's in full effect again. All right, big football guy over here. So that's pretty cool for me. And of course, it's spooky season. So honestly, the vibes are just unmatched right now. And to celebrate all of that, I'm going to be returning to the spooky village I built last year in October, and I'm going to be expanding upon it. I really like how this build turned out. I hope you guys enjoy it as well. Let's get started with the episode. I know that last episode, I said that I was going to terraform this area around the castle, but it's October, okay? And spooky season takes priority over pretty much everything. So I'm gonna push this project back to the next episode and uh, let's, let's fully commence into spooky season. Quickly before we get into anything spooky for this episode, I have to welcome two new YouTube members. So we have a Darlia H who is now a barrel and a Liam001 who is a pumpkin. But if you guys would like to join a Darlia and a Liam along with the rest of the people in here, you can do so by becoming a YouTube member. You can either go to my channel and click the join button or you can click the link in the description. And if you become a Shramalam, which is the only tier I have right now, you will get a block named after you in this world. But now let me pass it to myself a couple weeks ago because I'm actually recording this part at the end of the video because I forgot to record it before everything else started. I'm just a little bit disorganized sometimes. All right, you know how it goes. <sighs> yeah, keep that burp in, sure, dude. And I kind of want to begin this episode by just touching up what we've already done. I was kind of on a time crunch when I made this episode last year. It had been a very long time since I had last uploaded. So I kind of took some shortcuts in this village, I'm not going to lie. I uh, like a very, very obvious shortcut. Uh, the path isn't even kind of done. This path only really stretches down like the main part of the road. It kind of goes off this way. But once again, it kind of goes off to nowhere. There's nothing connecting over in this direction. Like I should probably have it connect back here again from over there. Like I feel like that only makes sense. And then also kind of just looking around here for now, I think this place could do with a lot of bone meal. It's very, very bland. And then once I'm finished touching up what we've already done, we can start expanding this village. And I think it would make the most sense to expand in this direction. I could go this way, but there's like kind of a weird hill over here. And without some terraforming, I think it would be kind of strange to build on. Whereas like over here, there's a lot more like flat space around the same level that all these houses are built and we could even go down this little hill a little bit there's a lot more room but before I get too far ahead of myself let me go back to my storage room gather up some materials and we can make the current village we have look a little bit better I do have to go gather some oak wood though I thought I'd have some in this chest but I do not but I gathered way more spruce wood than I needed last episode so thankfully we have a ton of that to use <laughs> for these pathways and just for the rest of the builds in this one um, though I'm probably still going to have to gather some more spruce wood down the line I'm quite certain that this absolute mess of oak trees was here for the past like 500 days I just kept chopping away at it every so often whenever I needed oak wood and now I'm finally finished gathering it this was such a pain to gather. Never plant oak trees like I just did. I feel like at most you should do like a 10 by 10 box. I think I just did like a three by like 40 line. <laughs> that was horrible. <laughs> I threw all the oak wood in this white shulker box and here we are back in the spooky village. Let's go ahead and connect together this entire pathway.
We now have a completely connected pathway here around at least like the left side of the village from the way I'm facing now. I didn't bother putting a pathway over this way. I actually filled in this area that was dug out just with some more podzol for now. I don't really know what I want to do in this direction. Maybe that can be like the Halloween build for next year. We can expand this way, but for now, I think this pathway is good. I also put a pathway up to each of the doors to the houses. But uh, yeah, now it comes over this way and it wraps around in uh, two different directions, which I think is a good start. I'm definitely going to put more pathway out this way, but for now this looks nice. Um, I already started doing this, but next I'm going to bone meal the grass, and I think I'm going to get rid of the flowers. I'm also getting rid of a lot of the tall grass, not all of it though. So let me go around and do this for a bit, and we're going to see what this looks like. I wasn't really able to bone meal everywhere I wanted to, because some of these areas have podzol in them instead of grass. I'm still kind of unsure what I want to do with like the rest of the ground. I don't know if I want to replace this all with grass yet, or if I want to keep the podzol. I'll probably be thinking about that throughout this episode, but for all the grass that is here, I was able to bone meal it obviously, and I think it just adds a little bit more life to this area. Now, I think if I wasn't on a time crunch last episode, this is where I would have left this build. So now that we've kind of caught up to where I wanted to be right now, we can start planning out the expansion. So I think that means we're going to get rid of pretty much all of the spruce trees that are right here. So off I went tearing down all of the spruce trees that I can see, and I also decided to line the perimeter with spruce wood just so I can better visualize where all these buildings are going to go. And actually speaking of those buildings, I went through and laid out an outline for all the different buildings and different structures we're going to put in this village expansion. As you can see, we now have the entire layout of the village expansion that's going to be built in this episode. And really quickly before I gather any materials for this, let me kind of go through my thought process. I'm still going to have to figure out exactly where the path is going to go, I'm sure that's going to take some terraforming at some point. But assuming the path winds through all of these buildings correctly, um, this building here is going to be like a tavern or like an inn kind of thing. I was thinking about having a church in this area, but I think I'd rather have like a tavern bar inn kind of area. I think this will look a lot cooler. Now, all of these smaller rectangular buildings are going to be houses in pretty much the same style as these ones up here. So we're going to keep with the theme that we've already built. So like this is going to be one of the houses. That'll be a house right there that I'm looking at. One right over here as well. There's a couple more of these down here too. So all these little boxes are just going to be pretty small houses in this kind of style. I forgot glass right there. How did I not notice that before? <laughs> I'll have to try to remember to fix that. We also have like two rounded shapes in here. This one I think is going to be some kind of pond. And then on this other side, I have this really weird like oval shape slanting down the mountain. I want this to be a field of some sort. I don't know if it's going to be like pumpkins or if it'll be something else that fits like the spooky vibe, but all I know is that this is going to be a field. That is the schematic for right now. And I think the next step in this video is for me to gather materials for the houses. I want to get these built up first before we do anything else. That also includes this tavern. So just all the buildings in general. We'll get back to the pond and the field at a later time. Maybe once we're like terraforming the area and working on the path and the custom trees and stuff, we can get back to those two things. But for right now, let me go gather up the materials for all of these buildings. I gathered a bunch of materials for all of these buildings, but of course, I didn't write anything down because why would I make my life easier in the future? I don't know. So there's a good chance that I don't mention a material that I ended up gathering. But you know what? You're just going to have to trust me that I gathered everything, okay? I promise I did. But we started out here gathering up some dark oak. I made sure to strip it along the way just so I didn't have to do that later. And then after taking a quick stop at my mob farm to refuel my rocket supply, I headed out in search of a mangrove swamp to gather a whole lot of mud. It has been like 1300 days in this world so far, and I still don't have a good dedicated mangrove swamp that I always come back to. I literally always find a new one whenever I need the blocks in that biome. Next up, I went and gathered the materials needed to make orange and black concrete powder. So that includes some yellow flowers that I can mix with the red flowers I have for my iron farm to make orange dye. I got an entire shulker box of gravel and also an entire shulker box of sand. And luckily I actually had a bunch of leftover black dye from last episode, so I didn't need to go gather that. Once I had those materials, I was able to make a good chunk of the concrete powder into actual concrete. I finished up gathering the materials by gathering up some deep slate and now it is finally time I can cut to the time lapse and we can start building. And I completely forgot to record the beginning of the tavern so that's why this time lapse begins with the tavern already partially built. This is a long time lapse though so I hope you enjoy it.
Yeah, so, um, ignoring the shulker monster right here, um, all of the houses are built. Not very decorated, I mean, the inside is very bland in all of these, but to be fair, uh, the inside of all of these houses back here is also completely empty. So I don't really know if I'm gonna get to the insides, I might decorate the outsides a little bit more. But we now have this nice line of pretty much identical houses. This one does look a little bit different, I think it's the most different looking house here, because it has like two exposed sides on the end. This actually might be my overall favorite house build, even though I did miss two trapdoors. Let me go actually put those on now, because if I don't, I will 100% forget. And those two trapdoors tie everything together. But of course, then we have this tavern, which I was really indecisive on when I was building this thing to begin with. I took it down a couple times. I didn't really know what kind of shape I wanted to go with. I was originally going to go with like a diagonal shape, kind of like the gatehouse over here. But then I just decided to go with just like a basic rectangle. I like how it turned out. I think it looks cool. We have a nice little like roof theme going on here between these two buildings. And I think it's a good like centerpiece to this whole area. There was also a house over here, at least the outline of one. Um, but then I decided to get rid of it. I just didn't really think I had enough space. So I'll probably just terraform this area and like bring the rest of this like terrain down and make it look a lot more natural. But I'm not gonna worry about that right now. I'll worry about that in a little bit. As for right now, I would like to do this pond and also the field over on this side of the village. And even though I'm probably going to be using a good bit of these materials in this build right now, I like working with like clear shulker boxes and a clear inventory. So let me go organize all the shulker boxes that we just had. My shulker boxes are all cleaned out now, but uh, I should probably do something before I continue. I used another totem when I was building the tavern. That's why I don't have a totem on my offhand right now. Um, I tried to run by a creeper and it blew up directly next to me. So I'm going to borrow this. This is my last totem I have. I don't know if I'm gonna get more after this. Maybe I'll get at least one more just to restock the church, but I'm kind of tired of using totems, honestly. I might change my mind back on this, I don't really know, but for now, I don't really want to use one after this one. But now let's go ahead and load up these shulker boxes with materials for a pond and a field. Now I had most of the materials that I wanted already in my storage room, but there were a few more that I had to fly out and get really quickly. One of those materials was sweet berries. I think those are going to fit really nicely in this village. And then the final two are just different types of flowers. I decided to get some orange flowers and the most purple flower I could find. I feel like purple is a pretty good spooky color as well, so I think it fits with the vibe. And now that we're back, I would like to introduce you all to a new segment called Building a Pond with Shram. So take it away, me in the future. Probably a post-com, but maybe also not a post-commentary style. Could be live commentary. I haven't really completely decided how I want to do the next part of this video yet. I don't really plan my videos out too well. I don't know if you guys have noticed that. But uh, anyway, I should probably stop talking now. I, yeah, let's just cut to the segment. Welcome to the first installment of Building a Pond with Shram. I am your host, Shram, and uh, today we have a special one. I'm gonna build a pond. But yeah, my original vision for this point of the video was for me to go step by step on how to build a pond and kind of make it a joke, but I don't really think that's all that funny anymore, the more I think about it. So I guess I'll kind of just talk about what I'm doing. Um, but I decided to build up the walls around the pond to bring everything to one, you know, solid level. Kind of just works better in my head whenever I'm working on anything like water related and everything's all at the same level. It saves a lot of time. You don't actually have to go through and make every source a water source. I mean, you can if you want to. I'm just kind of lazy. But once I had everything up to the same level, I filled it all in with water and then I got rid of all the dirt I just placed. This was probably also a waste of time, but after that, I decided to replace all of the pods all on the inside with regular grass. I will be changing changing this out again, and I kind of always knew it wasn't just going to be grass. That's why this is technically a waste of time, but it just helps me whenever I have just like a clean palette to work with. Once all of that grass was put in, it was time to like mossify everything. And by that, I mean I sprinkled around some mossy stone and some actual moss on the bed of the pond. This is definitely my favorite way to decorate ponds, so I figured it would work here. I then moved on to decorating the walls of the pond in a very similar way. I broke in some cobblestone, used some mossy stone, and just kind of made them look a little grimy. And then after that, it was time to rough up the outsides and also add some vegetation. So I went around throwing down some slabs just to try to make it look not as perfect. I threw in some sea pickles on the inside to provide some light. I bone mealed underwater just to give it some more life down there. I also had a bunch of like tropical fish sitting in one of my chests, so I figured this was a good spot to actually release them. And then I added some more vegetation to the outside of the pond, like some sweet berries, some pieces of sugar cane, and I made sure to put string on top of them so they wouldn't grow anymore, and some of those flowers I just gathered. 
And with that, the pond is finished. I didn't want to go overly complicated with this. I probably could have added a whole lot more vegetation, but I think this looks nice. For the field then, I think I'm actually just going to toss this to a time lapse because honestly making fields and time lapses is really satisfying to me. So let's go ahead and do that. I hope you guys enjoy time lapses because this episode is very time lapse heavy. After making the field, I decided to go around and terraform the area and I also threw in the same path design we've already made throughout the new area that we just built today. Once finished with the pathways, I decided to make some retaining walls. I figured this was kind of a nice touch rather than just having everything terraformed naturally. So I used a combination of tough cobblestone and regular stone to make some retaining walls in a few different spots. I also connected up some stone and some stone brick walls at the top of all of the retaining walls. And I think it looks pretty cool. Quick update on the progress of the village. So now we have a connecting path all throughout the new area. And we also have this retaining wall. So I started from the gatehouse and I'm able to follow this path all the way over to this far house. And then it also branches off in this direction over here, where it takes you back up to this level and back around to, you know, the original part of the village that we built last time. And by last time, I mean a year ago, of course. What I'd like to do next is extend this design here to the rest of the retaining walls. So I built this last year and I think it looks kind of cool and I think it's gonna be nice to have around all of these different retaining walls. And I do wanna start with this section right here, but I should probably clean out my inventory first. And before I actually build anything else that's new, I wanna update these a little bit by just adding some oak texturing in here. Very, very simple, but I think it's gonna look really nice once we do this to all of the retaining walls around the area. All the retaining walls are now complete and they're definitely all not like uniform. They're not completely symmetrical, but I think it looks pretty cool this way. So I didn't actually change this section at all right here. I could have pushed it back and made it, you know, like a straight down wall and put some support beams and stuff, but I kind of like what this looks like on its own, especially with a little bit of dirt mixed in here. I just kind of think it looks pretty sick. But anyway, past this, we have a couple like small beams that are kind of supporting something a little bit taller one here and then like a medium sized one here. I kind of had these for like the diagonal sections. I didn't really know what else to do, but for the flat sections, as you can see, we have these archways all over the place and they extend all the way around. So just a mixture of the regular archways and then like the small beams on the corners. That's kind of just all I did all the way around here. This one's a little bit different as well, a little bit funky but I think it looks pretty cool. With the retaining walls finished, next up I wanted to build a whole bunch of custom trees, but before I could get to building any of those, I needed to gather some more spruce wood because I was essentially completely out. I have tried to say this sentence way too many times, so I'm gonna take it slow. I gathered a shulker box of spruce wood and also a shulker box of spruce leaves. I don't know why I could not figure out how to say that. It just, it just was not working with me. But after gathering the materials, it was time to build some custom trees. And I gotta be honest, the second one I build here looks like absolute poop. I, I, I'm just gonna be completely real. It looks terrible. I think I'm gonna have to come back and fix this one at some point, but it's just not it right now. I think the rest of them look pretty good. We have some medium sized trees. We also have some trees uh, where I don't actually use any spruce wood. Instead I use spruce fences, makes for you know a much smaller tree, but I still think it looks pretty nice in this area. And all together, I think they look good, except for that second one. That was, I don't know what I was thinking. That was just tragic. And I am very, very close to finishing this build. I just have to run around and do a few more small things like putting some more vegetation all over the place. I need to throw down some lanterns and some regular fences just kind of bordering the path. Honestly, don't know if I have any footage of that, but uh, trust me, I did that <laughs> because I do that with all of my paths considering I can't think of anything else to border them. And I also, of course, went around just bone mealing everywhere else. When I can't think of what to put in a plain field of grass, I just use bone meal. It's just very easy. <laughs> but with all of that being done, let's check out what this area looked like at the beginning of the episode and compare it to now. At the beginning of the video, this area was just a whole bunch of spruce trees and a bunch of weird looking terrain. It really wasn't much to look at. And overall, the village in general uh, was just very tiny. But now fast forward approximately 80 Minecraft days and it looks like this. Looking pretty sick with the shaders on in my opinion too. I'm actually really proud of how this build turned out. I think I say that every episode 
because honestly, every single episode when I'm in the middle of building something, I never imagine it looking good. And then I put those final touches on and I don't know, something just clicks with me and it ends up looking a lot nicer than I was expecting. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm sorry it took me so long to get this one out. A good amount of time I went into working on this video with the editing process and then of course with the building in general. But thank you so much for watching one final time. Really hope you enjoyed and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye. About a year ago, I built this iron farm in my spawn chunks, and this has been my main source of iron ever since. But it looks gross, all right? It's just a regular looking iron farm fully exposed to the world, which is just not great. So I figured today, it's very long overdue, but I would finally give this thing a makeover. I hope you guys enjoy what I came up with for this little transformation. Thank you so much for watching. Let's get started with the video. Are you guys able to tell that I got a new microphone? You know, I really hope you are able to tell. Uh, I hope it sounds a lot better. And for tax purposes, uh, this was a thousand percent a business expense. All right, everything I bought for this thing. A hundred percent for my business. But enough about microphone shenanigans. Let's move on to the builds for today. A couple episodes ago, I built this castle. And I think it looks pretty sick. Uh, the problem is that the terraforming looks like absolute doo-doo. What? What the fuck? This uh, pretty badly needs to be touched up. I was going to do this last episode, but then uh, it was spooky season. So I think um, no one's going to blame me because spooky season takes priority over most things. But to begin this episode, I want to touch up the terraforming around this area. I would also like to hatch three chickens. That would have been cool. But let me go grab a bunch of dirt and we can start terraforming. So I think I've vastly underestimated how much work this is actually going to take. Just flying around and looking at this, uh, this is going to be a pretty large terraforming project. Like, I don't know what the hell to do with this. This is kind of in the way. Like, not exactly, but it's close. It's adjacent. It's also some cats down there. That's actually pretty sad. Hold on, actually. Let me go save those guys. All right, we got one. What's up, little man? You stay there. Let me go get your friend now. All right, we got the friend. Let's go. And you have two different colored eyes. Oh, that's beautiful. This is already the best start to an episode I think I've ever had. We got two cats. This is fantastic. All right, now I think I can fly away and they can teleport, hopefully. I don't think my cat's supposed to do this. We got both cats in the bedroom looking very nice right now. And I think I have some name tags somewhere. So if you guys want to provide some names for these cats, I will definitely name them next episode. And actually, speaking of names, we still have this unnamed parrot all the way down here. My boy has been sitting here looking at this piece of wood for like 1,300 Minecraft days. He's just hanging out. He's been here pretty much from the beginning. I think I got him in the first episode. Maybe the second episode. I don't actually remember, but it was very early on. Um, I guess this, this little lad needs a name too. I probably asked this already and then just didn't name the animals. I, I gotta be honest, I probably forgot to do that. But I will definitely take name suggestions from the comments for next episode. Anyway, though, let me drop off all this extra fish and then we can start terraforming, which I am uh, yeah, very much looking forward to, dude. This is going to take a long time. Now, it definitely looks really weird, right? Because all of the walls here are just perfectly flat. But that's kind of the idea. I do want to add some retaining walls going around here eventually. I'm not going to do that at the moment because I don't exactly know where the pathway is going to go. I kind of outlined a few areas where the pathway could go, like where I'm walking right now. I think we can probably have a pathway going all the way around the mountain. We can have another layer of the pathway like right here. This one kind of abruptly ends, but I don't know what I want to do with this just yet. And then also down here again, there's kind of an area for another like third level to this pathway that can keep going down here and to another part of the city potentially. So I'm leaving it very bare at the moment, but I do think it looks a lot better than it did before. And I'm also playing on Halloween, as you can probably tell, as all the zombies there have jack-o'-lanterns on their head. I kind of love that. But that is all of the progress I wanted to make on the terraforming today. So let's shift focus onto the main build of the episode, which is going to be the iron factory. For the walls of this factory, I would like to have a rather mild gradient, but I wanna go from the bricks all the way up to these jungle planks. And I think these blocks in this order accomplish that. I'm still trying to get better at working with gradients. It's still kind of tough for me to, you know, exactly blend the colors together, but I think this is gonna look pretty cool. 
And I also think I want to mess with shadows a little bit more. I've been trying to learn some more advanced building tips in this game and a lot of the better builders use a ton of shadows. And what I mean by that is I can bring a darker color brown here, like stripped spruce logs, and I can mix that in with the packed mud and the jungle planks near the top of the building, specifically in areas that could be shaded, like spots that are directly under the roof or directly under like a window cover or something like that. And then for the roof blocks, we're probably just going to use some deep slate stuff. So I'll use a mixture of like cobbled deep slate, uh, probably some deep slate brick slabs, that same kind of design that I usually go with whenever I make a deep slate roof. We'll throw in some tuff and some moss on the roof to make it look a little deteriorated. It'll essentially be the same roof design that we used in the farming village a few episodes back, this right here. I'm a really big fan of these roof designs and I think it'll fit perfectly in an old factory build. I think I can do a pretty good job with this. This is probably the most advanced build that I'm going to have in this world. And uh, you know, hopefully I don't screw it up too bad. But let's start gathering up all these materials. Off I went then to the mesa to gather some terracotta this block looks fantastic with all the other wall blocks i'm going to be using so i had to gather up a ton of this stuff needed to get some more jungle wood so just hopped right over to the jungle that's very close by and then of course i needed to get a crap ton of granite i think that is the block i end up using the most of in this build i don't know how true that is but it felt like i used a lot of granite after that though i decided to get some mangrove i don't end up using this at all i wanted to use this for some shadow effects on the bottom of the build but i just kind of didn't i decided to use another block down the line which actually kind of acts like less as a shadow but you'll see what i mean and then the final block that i gather in this section is some clay to make some bricks now before i do anything else in this video i have a little bit of an announcement to make i got a new minecraft skin and it's like actually kind of me i think it looks pretty sick got my beard got a mustache got the hair color sort of accurate i also got a little sandwich on my shirt. This skin was done by Kali, so I will leave their link to everything in the description. So if you would like to commission them to make you a skin, feel free to do so. I think they did an amazing job. Now there's a lot of work that has to be done to spawn, right? Because uh, I built this squid farm that just doesn't work a few episodes back. And also with that squid farm, I got rid of a lot of the water around here. So we're gonna have to fill all this back up with water at some point. I don't know if I wanna worry about that right now. At the moment, I wanna make this landscape up here look a lot better. And I think the way I'm going to do that is by getting rid of this part of the mountain and bringing everything down to like this level over here. Oh man, all right, well, <laughs> let me go ahead, put down a beacon and uh, I guess let's, let's start working. Quick progress update, um, it really doesn't even look like I made all that much progress, but my pickaxe is about dead. It has three durability left and I do not wanna lose my man, the Silk Touch one. And also my shovel, Billy Bob, has seen better days. So I'm gonna take a quick break and we're gonna go ahead and repair both of these tools and then I'll be back to the grind. I'm probably gonna have to repair these tools like two more times before I finish this. Once again, my trusty pickaxe is about to die, but uh, you know, a little bit more progress was made. I didn't really use my shovel too much more this time because it's mostly stone at this point, but let's go back to the guardian farm and repair the pickaxe. I ended up needing to repair my tools like six times when I was cutting down this mountain. So instead of coming back with four more progress reports, I figured I would just show you guys the rest of me chopping it away. For whatever reason though, there was one section of me cutting this mountain away that just wouldn't render out in replay mod. I don't know what kept happening, but the game kept crashing. I apologize for that, but there is one section of me clearing this out that just isn't here right now. After clearing all of that out, uh, stone is by far my most mined block. I have mined 50,000 more stone than I have grass, <laughs> and grass is in second. That's kind of nuts right now. I'm pretty sure before I started clearing this out, they were just about tied. This took way longer than I was expecting it, 
And it's honestly not even done, but I'm getting tired of clearing this out and I really just want to start building. But first, let me get a chicken. Darn. Another thing is that I think I'm going to have to move my iron farm. Because I want the iron farm in the factory somewhere and, you know, with where it's placed now, I'm going to have to do a good amount of terraforming around the side of this mountain. And I kind of just don't want to do that. I cleared enough space back here where I can pretty easily just shift it back like right where I'm looking right now and then just, you know, expand the factory from there. But for now, we can leave the farm where it is and we can kind of just let it cook while I'm making the factory. And if anyone's wondering how much stone I got out of this, I got five double chests full, like completely, and then a little bit of the sixth. That's a lot of stone. I probably won't be needing any more stone for a very long time. Also got a good amount of dirt. Each of these has, uh, you know, a double chest behind it. And one more thing, um, if anyone's wondering how much iron I have in this world, because this has been going on, obviously, since I built it pretty much. There's all this in here, which doesn't really look like all that much. But then uh, this chest is nearly full with blocks of iron. So we have a lot of iron in this world, <laughs> but it's finally time we can start building. I'm going to take some of this stone and I'm going to map out where this build is going to go. I say we have a wall over here of length 17, and then maybe we have it go this way about 19 blocks. Actually, I think I want it to be a little bit longer, so let's go a couple more blocks. This is uh, definitely not going to be a small build, I'll tell you that much. Yeah, I think this is a good size. We're going to have a lot of floor space in here, which is really nice. So that'll be the main part of the factory, and then we're going to have a couple buildings off to the side over here and these are going to be a lot smaller so it kind of looks like a mess but let me explain my mess <laughs> so this is going to be the main part of the factory like i mentioned before and then we have two little offshoots which i think are going to mainly be like extra storage or something and then i put some extra pieces of stone up front these are going to act as like the supporting beams to actually frame out the build in its entirety i think it's gonna look really cool we're gonna have some nice big windows in these gaps it's gonna look sick i think let me quickly travel back home grab a shulker box of stone stuff and i'll be back I'm just going to start out with the tuff we gathered. I'm going to go through and pretty much change all of this stone into tuff. And I'm going to build all of this tuff up one more block. We're going to have a two block base here at the bottom. And now it's time to work in a little bit of texturing. And we're going to do this with some cobblestone, with some moss and some mossy cobblestone. And I think this looks pretty good for the texturing. I tried to keep all the mossy stuff towards like the corners of the building. So either where like the building changed direction or where there was just one of these like support beams sticking out. So I think this is actually a really solid start. So now we can work in some of the red blocks. Just for now, I'm going to take these three. We got granite, we got bricks, and we got terracotta. So what I'm gonna do is on top of all of these blocks, I'm gonna put two layers of terracotta. I didn't go around and put the terracotta everywhere just yet. I think I'm just gonna focus on this sidewall over here just so I can get like the color gradient and stuff down and then we can replicate that all the way around. Yeah, I think that looks nice just going up to the mud and I think that's a pretty good size. I think I'm most likely going to run out of bricks if I try to do this all the way around right now. So I think, let me just focus on the main rectangle here and see if we can get this completely built and then I'll go gather more bricks if I need to. All the walls of the main rectangle are up, I guess except for that one piece of mud block up there. I do this all the time, okay. Well, all the walls are pretty much up. I think next I want to put on, like, I guess the roof, sort of. It's going to be weird, kind of, because there's going to be another little building up top here on this roof. So let me just grab some deep slate and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So up here, I'm going to have a combination of the deep slate tiles and the deep slate brick slabs, just as like the floor and the roof. And we'll probably have to do some kind of spawn proofing up here as well. I can always just raise these by half a slab at some point later if I need to because the iron farm itself is going to go down here. So I'll have to make sure that none of the iron golems can spawn up here, but that shouldn't be an issue. You can kind of think of this as like the second floor, I guess. It's going to be about this big. I originally was going to have a much smaller, you know, building on top of this building, but it didn't look right. Like I, I couldn't really see it from the ground. I didn't really like what it looked like. So we're going to expand it and have actually a pretty decently sized building up here. After mapping out the dimensions of the building on top of the factory, I went and built up the walls using the same gradient design that we used for the rest of this build. This section though is actually going to come to a peak for the roof, so I decided to throw that on as well, where 
where we're going to be using some deep slate while mixing in some mossy blocks and some tuff to make it look a little bit destroyed. I would now like to work on some wall design. So let's use this wall back here to try to figure out what kind of windows we want. I feel like I always forget scaffolding for builds anymore, but whatever. Um, let me just cut out a whole bunch of this wall here. I want to come around here with some walls so we can actually frame out the windows a little bit better. And I think something like this looks pretty cool, but let's mix in some brick walls as well. I kind of think something just as simple as that looks pretty nice. Like I'll put some glass in here for sure, but I like that as the frame. And now of course I forgot glass because you know, why wouldn't I? Um, but before I go back to grab any, let me try another little wall design up here. So on top of the window, what if we kind of just extend this going all the way across? And then let's add some stairs to make a little archway. That does make a pretty weird spot there at the top, but I feel like putting stairs like that looks pretty cool. I think that looks really good. I like the whole crossbeam section and I think it divvies up the wall really well. And I feel like hanging some lanterns from that is going to look awesome. But before we get to that, let me go home and grab some glass. I also wanted to run down to the super smelter quickly and bring all the rest of the clay balls that we haven't smelted yet. I'm going to set up a very small super smelter near the factory, just so the rest of these clay balls smelt while we're working. You know what, I was actually just about to complain that I didn't bring any fuel, but then I remembered how much of a mountain I just destroyed, and how much coal I actually got from that. That's amazing, let's go. And part of me thinks maybe I should use a different color of glass, but I do feel like just the regular glass looks pretty nice. I think I might go through later, if I can remember to do this. I probably won't. Um, but I might go through later and incorporate some white stained glass in there too, just to make the windows look a little bit older. I used this effect on my nether build and I really liked how it turned out. But before I actually go any further, do I want to have walls on the bottom here? I think I do. I think I like that version of the window a little bit more. The more I actually look at what I've built so far, the more this is bothering me. I've messed up the gradients on two of these sides, I think. This is supposed to be brick at the bottom and then granite near the top. It might not look much different, but I prefer this a lot more. And I definitely like this enough to duplicate this to all of the sides. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, quick update. I have run out of glass. So I wasn't able to finish off this side here, but I pretty much have the shape of everything in and there is no window right here. And there is also no window on this end of the opposite side of the building, because I think I want some like copper tubing going through this side just to make it really look industrial. I'll build that up probably near the end, but I just wanted to let you guys know why there is not a window there. But the place is definitely coming along. I feel like it can certainly use some greenery, but once again, we'll get to that near the end. In the meantime, while I let everything smelt, I'm going to build up the walls of the rest of the entire build. Or at least until I run out of brick, whatever happens first. <laughs> I am now out of bricks, but I have done a decent amount of work here on the walls. We got most of the walls up. There's just a little bit more I have to do um, on these last two parts over here. But I've been toying around with what kind of roof design I want over here, and I think I've settled on this. I feel like it should be a little bit taller, but I just can't make that look good, if I'm being honest. So I think we're going to settle with the more gradual slant up. And now, I guess, while we continue to wait for the bricks to smelt, so let me go put on the deep slate roof on those last two little sections. These roofs over here are going to be the same exact design that we used for this section here. So it's going to be the same combination of deep slight blocks and we're also gonna break in the tough, the mossy cobblestone and the moss every so often. All right, now up next, we just have to mess these roofs up. And of course, you know, it, it starts raining when I when I try to do that cool transition. But the build is certainly taking a shape. I think it's a good one. I met that weird part of the build where like, I feel like it looks weird and I'm not sure how it's gonna end up nice, but it usually does. So let me just kinda, kinda just trust the process, I suppose. But hopefully we should have a good amount of brick actually smelted so we can finish up all the walls here. And now I believe all of the walls are in. Obviously they have to be decorated a lot more, but everything is closed off. It's like a complete building now, I guess. So that's pretty nice, but now I kind of have to figure out what kind of design I want to do for the exterior of this section. And I feel like doing that tomorrow. So, you know, it's going to be a bunch of hours in the future for me, but probably only a like half a second skip for you guys. So let's see how I'm feeling tomorrow. Hey, look, it's tomorrow and I'm feeling okay. So that's good, I guess. Um, but I do feel like I've been talking a lot in this video. So to break that up a little bit, let me just kind of put my head down and work on this build for a while. And I'll throw this to a time lapse.
At this point, the building is completely done, but there's still a little bit of work I'd like to do on the outside, and that's what I would like to do right now to conclude this video. But let me quickly run through everything that I did. 360. 360. Oh, I can't be stopped. I'm too sick with it. Oh, I'm just, I'm way too sick with it. Hit that guy while I was on fire. It's just, you know, unrivaled. Let's start on the inside, I guess. I think this is probably going to be the most surprising part, but I actually did an interior to pretty much everything, which is not very, you know, common of me. But here's what the main interior looks like. I think it looks pretty cool. Kind of doesn't really look like a factory. I wish this was like create mod or something so I can put some conveyor belts down because then it would actually look really sick. But in just vanilla, this is what it looks like. A lot of leaves chilling around because when I don't know what to decorate with, I just kind of put a leaf. And also this is elevated up a little bit because uh, a lot of this area was spawnable for the golems. So I needed to get a little bit creative with how I spawn proofed everything. So if you see a bunch of random slabs or like this trap door, it's because I'm pretty sure this area is spawnable. A lot of trial and error went into this. I found a lot of iron golems just chilling around, but I'm pretty sure they're now all spawning in the farm. But there's this table in the middle, a couple smithing tables, a bunch of blocks of iron, a couple blocks of raw iron, a couple chests and stuff. Just some very generic looking interior design. I should probably also throw an anvil here somewhere, but I will maybe remember to do that. I'm probably gonna forget. This room is completely undecorated, but this is kind of just how I get to the farm, which is now over here. And as you can see, it is currently running. I don't know if the rates are better or worse. I'm really not sure, but it should be good enough for me for a while. But in all honesty, I probably don't even need an iron farm anymore because we have so much iron, but still I do want to keep it. And then these two buildings jutting off of the main one is just going to be used as storage. So we have a whole bunch of chests in here, a couple pieces of scaffolding acting as some tables, some barrels, nothing too crazy in here. And the other one looks like this. So again, a bunch of chests, some scaffolding, some barrels, all that fun stuff. This one actually does have all my iron in it, and sadly these are all single chests. I should have built these out a little bit further to make them all double, but it's fine. It doesn't really matter. But this is where all my iron actually is, and over here is where all of the poppies are. As you can see, I missed a spot to spawn proof. Hopefully that's fixed now, but I guess I'll take this iron. Um, the pathway here is another product of me spawn proofing things. It doesn't look the best. I don't know if I'm going to change this design later to make it look a little bit better, but still remain spawn proofed. Maybe if we bone meal the surrounding grass, it'll just blend in a little bit more and it won't look as bad. But as of right now, it looks kind of weird. I don't hate it, but it's not my favorite thing. As for this building up top, it is also completely empty. So I didn't decorate the inside of here, but it is totally spawn proof. So nothing should be able to spawn up here. The final thing I want to talk about with this building is I tried to do a couple different building techniques. So instead of just keeping the typical gradient, I worked in some spruce logs and I also worked in some acacia wood. With the spruce, I was kind of going for like some kind of shadow effect here because it's like a shade or two darker than the mud. And then for the acacia, I'm just going for a different kind of like rundown look for the walls. Like maybe something happened over time. Like maybe some of the walls eroded and the color changed. I don't really know like scientifically what's going on, but that's kind of the idea I was going for. Figured I want to push myself a little bit further when it comes to building and I want to try some more advanced techniques. And I see a lot of like really good builders using shading and stuff like that in their builds. I want to try to get better at that. So this is my first attempt. Overall though, I think the building looks pretty solid and it's definitely functional and certainly overkill. I don't need this building to be as big as it is. But like I mentioned before, we are not quite done yet. I want to just kind of bone meal the outside here and maybe set up like a poppy field or something like that. Like I think that would fit over here pretty well considering obviously this generates a lot of poppies. Before I do any of that though, I want to clear out all of these disgusting shulker boxes. They are way too disorganized. I always try to keep them organized as I go. And at some point I just get lazy and throw my entire inventory into one. And that kind of just stacks on top of each other until none of them are organized anymore. So let me go clear all these out and I'll be right back. Back at the iron factory once again, and I did see an iron golem outside. So where the hell did this iron golem spawn? I have no idea. I just picked up some iron right here. Dude, I'm so tired of spawn proofing things. Why can iron golems spawn just everywhere? Like, dude, they're huge. They always spawn in areas where they just suffocate like Mojang. Stop making them spawn into their deaths. I say, I say that as I literally just built a farm that continuously kills them. That's a little bit ironic. And by a little bit, I mean a lot. <laughs> but let me just get a little bit of stone slabbage 
And let me slab these two blocks on the inside. I really didn't think iron golems can spawn right here. Now we just have to decorate the outside and I think I can call this build complete. But I just realized that I did forget another flower. I want the tall red flowers as well. I think that'll look really nice with the poppies. I just have to go try to find some and bone meal them because I just don't have any on me. Only one steak? That's all I got out of that? Did you see how cool that was? I don't even want it. That's disrespectful. Before I start actually decorating anything out here, I want to move all these chests as well. Like, this is a lot of stone that I'm probably going to use in the future. But I really don't want to just take it all home with me. That would take a lot of trips. So I think instead, we're just going to use the extra chests in the storage area of this. And do you guys think I could just break all these and transport them over in enough time? I think I can. We're going to find out if I'm an idiot or not. All right, there's going to be a lot of blocks on the ground, but let's see if I can do this. No, they're despawning. No, I didn't completely make it. I got most of them inside. No. I wonder how many stacks I lost. Dude, are you serious? There was these bushes right here this whole time. It's not like I flew that far away to get them, but like, come on. How did I not realize these were right here? Where did you spawn? Oh my God, I hate these things. All right, time to get to the bottom of this. Where did you spawn? All right, turns out they can spawn right here. I'm so tired of this. Maybe that's enough now, who knows? Probably not. But I do know that this area is now clear. So let me grab some dirt that I just moved over here. We can make a good area for some farmland. I think this shape is probably pretty good. We're gonna have the farm be over here as well and then you know bump up to this level. I think that will look nice. And I also would like to kick up the elevation over here somewhere because I'd like to have some more farmland around here or just some fields in general. And I think I made a big enough area where we can kick this up even one block higher. And we're gonna have one other small hill. I don't even know if you can call it that. We're gonna have another small one over here though. Okay, so it looks like these small areas added some much needed elevation to this spot. So now we just have to plant the fields and bone meal some stuff. And I think that's gonna look great in a time lapse. So let's cut it away to the final time lapse of this episode. All right, so with the final bit of decoration on the outside, this build is now complete. I'm not gonna lie, every time I throw on these shaders, I forget how beautiful they look. But anyway, let's take a look at the build with some shaders on. I am actually really quite happy with how this place turned out. It's another situation where when I was building this, I didn't think it was going to look good in the end. But now here we are at the end, and I am very happy with this. Now, obviously, I think this is a massive improvement over what the normal spawn looked like <laughs> when it was just like that little mountain thing. And I think this opens us up pretty well to transform the rest of the spawn area here and have a whole bunch of different potential factories or warehouses or workshops or just buildings like that over here. I think that would be really cool. And then, of course, this is what the interior looks like. I think it looks pretty sick. Really big fan of this roof. I like how this turned out. And of course, most importantly, this thing has been pumping out iron this whole time and we actually have a decent amount. But that is going to do it for this episode of my hardcore Minecraft series. Really hope you guys enjoyed this one. Thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.